Welcome to CNU, the video series that will teach you everything you need to know to provide excellent nutrition care. In this video, I am going to provide an overview of the feeding methods that can be used for enteral nutrition. By the end of the video, you should be able to describe four feeding methods for enteral nutrition and understand the basic advantages and disadvantages of each method. If you find this video helpful, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Let's get started. When it comes to enteral nutrition, the four feeding methods that can be used are continuous, cyclic, intermittent, and bolus. Continuous is the most common in the acute care hospital setting. This is when the enteral formula is infused directly into the gastrointestinal tract for 24 hours per day. With a continuous infusion, the formula can be delivered using a mechanical feeding pump or by the force of gravity. The mechanical feeding pump is a motorized instrument that pulls the formula from its container and propels it through the feeding tube at a constant rate. The pump has a digital screen with buttons to start the feeding, stop the feeding, or adjust the feeding rate, which is always in milliliters per hour. The mechanical feeding pump is also used to give the patient water and can be programmed to flush at specific intervals such as every 6 hours or 8 hours. The gravity drip is a viable option for tube feeding when a mechanical feeding pump is not available. Formula is positioned above the patient's head and gravity causes it to flow out of the container and through the tube. Adjustments to the feeding rate are made by changing the height of the formula. When the formula is moved closer to the patient, the rate decreases. When the formula is moved away from the patient, the rate increases. Because mechanical feeding pumps are so common today, the gravity drip is not something that is done often in a hospital. However, it may be necessary in an emergency situation when supplies are low. One advantage of a continuous infusion is that it's an easy way to determine tolerance to tube feeding when it is first initiated. For example, if a patient is determined to be at a high risk for aspiration or has not eaten in a number of days, administering a large volume of formula at once can put the patient at high risk for complications. A continuous infusion allows for a gentle start and gradual increase while the patient is monitored for signs and symptoms of intolerances. Another advantage of a continuous infusion is that it tends to be best tolerated by patients with gastroparesis, a condition that is characterized by nausea, vomiting, and or abdominal pain after meals. This is common in the setting of advanced diabetes, abdominal surgery, and various neurological disorders. A third advantage of a continuous infusion is that it is low maintenance for nursing staff. This may seem like a selfish advantage, but in the context of a busy medical facility, being able to set the feeding rate and leave it for the entire day allows a nurse to devote more time to other aspects of care that are equally important. Nevertheless, there are some disadvantages to a continuous infusion. One disadvantage is that it can be a burden for patients who are awake and active. If a patient is able to walk and move around, being hooked up to an infusion all day and all night is quite inconvenient. In addition to this, a continuous infusion can contribute to a persistent feeling of fullness. This may not only be uncomfortable. If the patient has the ability to eat by mouth, it can reduce the ability to build an appetite and take away from the pleasure the food is supposed to bring, leading to an overall decreased quality of life. Now that we have covered continuous, we are going to take a look at the cyclic method. A cyclic infusion is any enteral infusion over a period that is less than 24 hours. Instead of the patient receiving enteral nutrition all day and all night, the infusion can be decreased to anywhere between 8 and 24 hours. In my professional experience, the most popular infusion time is somewhere in the middle of these values at 12 hours or 16 hours. The most common use of cyclic feeding is for nocturnal feeding, 
when the patient receives the infusion while he or she sleeps at night. Just like a continuous infusion, a cyclic infusion can be administered using a mechanical feeding pump or gravity drip. A major advantage of a cyclic infusion, and nocturnal feeding specifically, is that it maximizes mobility and activity throughout the day. Also, if a patient has the capacity to obtain some of the calories he or she needs by mouth, nocturnal feeds can avoid feelings of fullness before mealtimes. Similar to a continuous infusion, a cyclic infusion is low maintenance for nursing staff. One disadvantage of a cyclic infusion is that the patient is still connected to the feeding pump for an extended period. If the feeding occurs at night, the patient is forced to sleep with their head of bed elevated while laying on their back or side. A second disadvantage is that cyclic infusions require a higher feeding rate than a continuous infusion, which may be poorly tolerated by those who are prone to experiencing gastrointestinal distress. At this point, we have seen the continuous method and the cyclic method. Next, we will take a look at the intermittent method. Compared to the continuous and cyclic methods, the intermittent method more closely aligns with a normal eating pattern. Rather than delivering the formula for an extended period, with intermittent feeding the formula is infused for 20 to 60 minutes, 3 to 6 times per day. For example, a patient who is dependent on tube feeding may receive an intermittent feeding regimen of 400 milliliters of formula infused over one hour. This is given four times per day with feeding times of 8 a.m., 12 p.m., 4 p.m., and 8 p.m. The patient is hooked up to the feeding pump for the hour that he or she is being fed and is then disconnected until the next feeding session begins. This can be achieved with a mechanical feeding pump or a gravity drip. Water flushes are given before and after each feeding session to keep the patient hydrated while also reducing the risk of clogging the tube and promoting bacterial growth from formula residue that builds up in it. An obvious advantage of an intermittent feeding regimen is that it avoids the need to provide tube feeding overnight, allowing patients to be more comfortable, especially if they like to lay flat when they sleep. A disadvantage is that the patient must be able to tolerate a large volume of formula at once, which may not be the case if the patient has gastroparesis, gastroesophageal reflux disease, or is considered to be at very high risk for aspiration. A second disadvantage is that an intermittent feeding regimen can be high maintenance for nursing staff, since the nurse will have to stop and start the infusion as many as 12 times per day. This, of course, can take away time from equally important aspects of care. Now we can move on to the fourth and final feeding method, bolus. Out of all the feeding methods, the bolus method most closely aligns with a normal eating pattern. Bolus feeding is similar to intermittent feeding because it involves multiple feeding sessions per day, but with bolus the formula is infused in less than 10 minutes. Something that is unique to bolus feeding is that it generally does not involve a mechanical feeding pump. Instead, the formula is administered using a catheter tip syringe. This can be done by propelling the formula using the syringe plunger or by a gravity drip. There are two ways to get the formula into the syringe. The first way is to pour the formula into a bowl and then pull up on the plunger. Once the syringe is filled, you attach the tip directly to the feeding tube and push the plunger down. This delivers the formula at a very rapid pace. The second way to do it is to pull the plunger all the way out and then pour the formula into the top of the syringe. Once it is in there, you can either reinsert the plunger and push down, or you can allow the formula to flow into the feeding tube with the assistance of gravity, using the height to control the rate of infusion. You use the same techniques to give water flushes, and just like with the intermittent method, you flush the tube before and after each feeding session. 
One advantage of the bolus method is that it allows for a high amount of mobility and activity during the day. Small canisters of formula and catheter tip syringes can be easily transported out of the patient's home, and feeding can occur in a number of settings. The remaining advantage and the disadvantages of a bolus feeding regimen are shared with the intermittent method. The bolus method is advantageous because it avoids the need to provide tube feeding overnight. The patient must be able to tolerate a large volume of formula at once, which is not always the case. Plus, the feeding regimen can be high maintenance for nursing staff if the patient is unable to administer the formula on his or her own. Here is a summary for this lesson. The four feeding methods to provide enteral nutrition are continuous, cyclic, intermittent, and bolus. These can be achieved using a mechanical feeding pump or a gravity drip. The exception to this is bolus feeding, which is primarily done with a catheter tip syringe. The continuous method is when formula is infused 24 hours per day. An advantage of a continuous infusion is that it's an easy way to determine tolerance at initiation of tube feeding. A disadvantage is that it can become a burden for patients who are alert and active. The cyclic method is when formula is infused for less than 24 hours. A common use of the cyclic method is nocturnal feeding. Nocturnal feeding can be useful because it maximizes mobility and activity throughout the day and can avoid feelings of fullness before mealtimes for patients who have the capacity to eat by mouth. A disadvantage of a cyclic regimen is that the reduced time spent feeding results in a higher feeding rate than a continuous infusion. Both continuous and cyclic infusions are considered to be low maintenance for nursing staff since the feeding pump is adjusted infrequently. The intermittent and bolus methods align more closely with normal eating patterns. Intermittent feeding is when formula is infused for 20 to 60 minutes, 3 to 6 times per day. An advantage of an intermittent infusion is that it avoids the need to provide tube feeding overnight. A disadvantage is that the patient must be able to tolerate a large volume of formula at once, which is not always feasible. Last but not least, bolus feeding is when formula is infused for less than 10 minutes, 3 to 6 times per day. Bolus feeding can be particularly useful because it allows for a high amount of mobility and activity, especially when you consider that the supplies are easily transported out of the patient's home. Bolus feeding also avoids the need to provide tube feeding overnight. However, the patient must be able to tolerate a large volume of formula at once. Finally, both intermittent and bolus infusions are considered to be high maintenance for nursing staff since they are more time consuming than continuous and cyclic. Thank you for watching. Check out these videos for more content just like this.